Welcome to the fourth video in my FPS character controller series playlist. The full playlist and the GitHub source code link will be below. You might be wondering who this weird bean capsule man is. Well, this is the crouch feature in my FPS character controller. To implement crouch, what we're going to do is have or so the size of the collision shape of the character. This is a pretty standard feature for most games and allows you to do things like crouch under low hanging ceilings. And another pretty common thing, especially in Source Engine games, is you can use your crouch to get a little bit of extra jump height. If you crouch mid-air, the character will basically tuck his legs in, allowing him to clear obstacles. We are going to decrease the height of the collision shape to do this, and we're also going to move the player's camera down when they're crouching. To add crouch, the first thing you should do is add a keybind for it. So I'm going to add a new action named crouch in my project settings input map tab. And I'm going to click the plus button to map it to control. And I'm also going to map mine to a trigger button on my gamepad. If you don't have a controller, it's fine. Um, and you can also just map crouch to whatever key you want. Before starting on the code, I want to show you the structure of my character body 3D. Um, so my collision shape is a capsule and all capsule shapes over here have a height property which we can adjust to enable crouching up and down. If you're using another shape it might be slightly different. Um, and for the camera smoothing, um, the structure is a bit important for how you have your head and your camera nodes structured. So notice my camera is uh, positioned at 0, 0, 0. And then I have a camera smooth node positioned at 0, 0, 0 as well. And the head node above here is actually what I have moved. And now to move the head up and down with crouch, I'm actually going to add another additional node. And I'm going to rename the head node to head original position. Um, and then I'm going to create a new node called head. And uh, basically the head is now also going to be at position 0, 0, 0. And I'm just going to revoke the unique name of the head original position because all that node is for is just to track the standing camera pose like before. So now we have these three nested nodes. Um, how mine's set up, I have my camera head bobbing and then my camera smooth, that's for smoothing of stairs. And if you don't have stairs, I mean, you don't, you don't need the camera smooth node like me, but you are gonna need for this tutorial, um, having it structured like this, having the head original position and the head nodes here. And it's important that the head node is at the position zero, zero, zero and the head node should have a parent above that for the actual like head original position as we named it. When crouched the head is going to be translated down and then when we uncrouch it's going to be moved back and reverted to its original 0, 0, 0 position. So to position your camera at eye height as you normally would um, what we're going to do is move the head original position node instead and keep the camera, camera smooth if you have it and head nodes all at 0, 0, 0. And you should right click uh, access as unique name to make sure your head node has this percent sign next to it so you can access it in code. And now over to the code, um, the first thing I'm going to do is add a few variables at the top of my script. Crouch translate, which is going to be the height difference for um, how much smaller the capsule is going to get when he's crouching. Mine is 0.7. Crouch jump add, how much extra air time they're going to get um, if they jump up or like how much higher they're going to be able to jump if they crouch while jumping. And finally I'm going to add this is crouched variable just to keep track of whether we're crouched or not. So it would kind of make sense to um, add the full crouch translate to the jump like you're tucking your legs in so you should get like that full um, 0.7 but the reason I have it times 0.9 is uh, because it makes the camera jitter a little bit. If you don't get that full height, um, there will be a little kind of visual notifier that you're crouch jumping. And what I mean by that is in source games, when you jump and crouch, um, it kind of jitters the camera a little bit. And so by not translating it the full way, we're kind of emulating that effect. And it creates this little jitter when you jump and crouch. And uh, I actually kind of like that. It's like a little notifier that you're crouching in the air. Without this, when you crouch jump and to get that extra air time, you like can't even tell you're crouch jumping. Um, so I like that as a visual notifier to have it like jitter a teeny bit. And we'll set up the handle crouch function in a second. But one of the first things I'm going to do is I have a get move speed function, which 
uh, returns the current walking or sprinting speed. And I'm just going to add an if statement to that for if we're crouching. Um, I'm going to have my speed set at 80% of the walking speed. Uh, you can set it to whatever you want. But I'm going to make my character go 80% uh, of the walking speed if he's crouching. So returning the walk speed times 0.8 in the get move speed function. And now with that done, I'm going to set up a function to handle the crouch. So I'm going to place mine above this uh, handle no clip function I already have. And um, I'm going to use this on ready uh, tag. And this just makes the variable get set once everything has been set up. So if we try to uh, just set the collision shape 3D shape uh, dot height, which would be the original capsule height before on ready, it's going to be um, an error because the uh, collision shape hasn't actually been uh, instantiated yet. So on ready, I'm going to save the original capsule height and then we'll have this very simple handle crouch function. So we will set the is crouch variable to true if we're pressing the crouch button or not. And we're going to set the head's position to the negative uh, of the crouch translate if we're crouched. Otherwise, we set it to zero. Um, and this is the y position. It's vector three and this in the y of the vector three. So if we're crouching, then we're going to uh, move the head down the amount we're crouching, uh, whatever we set that to. Otherwise, we move it back up to its original position. And then we'll do a very similar thing with the capsule collision shape height. So uh, if if it is indeed crouching, if you haven't seen this uh, syntax in Godot, you can um, do this, uh, I think it's called a ternary operator. And basically you can do an if statement. This value is going to be used if this is true, otherwise this value is going to be used, uh, this syntax. Um, so we're going to be using the capsule's original shape height minus how much we're crouching down if we're crouched. Otherwise, just use the original height and set the collision shape 3D shapes height to that. And then we will set the Y position of the collision shape 3D to the collision shape height divided by 2. And this is assuming that uh, your character 3D is level with the floor. Um, so the origin point of the collision shape is like in the center. So right now I have this moved up one, which is half the height to make it level with the floor. And what I'm doing on this line here is always keeping it level with the floor. So at or setting the position dot Y to half the height. And this moves it up so the bottom of the collision shape is aligned with Y position zero in the character body scene. And most likely, I think you should have it set up like this where everything is aligned with Y equals zero. I keep calling it the floor, but what I mean is the base of the character body 3D scene, everything is aligned above the Y uh, equals zero mark. If you don't have it set up like this, this method probably won't work, so I recommend having your character body set up like this. And then that is all you need. And you can then set up the handle crouch function to be called within your physics process. And I have a bunch of different functions for handling various things like ground physics, air physics, etc. Um, I'm just going to put my handle crouch function at the very top of this. And with that, uh, you should have a very basic version of crouch working. And this is a little bit jittery right now. Um, it just immediately snaps to the crouch position, but it does work. You can crouch under objects. Uh, but there is one problem, and that is um, if you crouch under something and then stand back up, it's possible to like clip and get stuck in the object. And now to fix this, we'll be replacing a little bit of the logic in the handle crouch function. And instead, we will use this uh, if input.action is press crouch, then we set it to crouch. Uh, set the crouch to true, but if they want to uncrouch, we need to make sure they can. So um, we're going to do this else if statement before we set the is crouch to false if they want to uncrouch. So um, if input that is action press crouch, else if, so in this else if statement, um, cr uh, they will not have crouch pressed because that's the only condition here. So basically, this one is saying if they don't have crouch pressed and they are currently crouched, um, then we're going to use this function 
self.test move as a condition to allow them to uncrouch. And what this function does is just as it says, um, this is a built-in function on the character body 3D. Um, so we're calling self.testMove. The first parameter is the uh, position that you want to test the move from, and we just want the current position the character body's at. And we want it to shoot a test move up. And this is basically going to like shoot an imaginary version of our character up and simulate as if he would have moved up um, this amount. I think that's pretty self-explanatory what this is doing. Um, we are testing if the character from its current position can move up the amount of uh, space that it would translate back up towards the original position. Um, and this will return true if it hits something and false if not. So we're saying if not, uh, test move. So if this doesn't hit, meaning there is clearance above the character, then we can allow them to uncrouch. And with this, um, it will fix our original problem of standing up and clipping into things. And here's what that looks like. I am pressing crouch and now I'm not, and it is running a body test motion up and it's colliding or hitting that object above me. And then it's not letting me uncrouch because there is not enough space to do the crouch translate back up. Next, it is a bit wonky when we jump currently, so we're gonna add that effect where it's kind of like your character's legs get tucked in and they get a bit of extra air time. So to do that, I'm gonna modify the handle crouch function, and one thing I'm gonna add is a was crouched last frame function. So I'm gonna set that to is crouched before we potentially swap the crouch state here. So we'll be able to check if we crouched or uncrouched this frame. And then depending on that, I'm going to set this translate y if possible variable. And so I'm going to add an if statement here and we're going to check if the crouch state changed. So if the was crouched last frame is not equal to the current value, which would mean it has changed uh, since right here. Um, and we're not currently on the floor, so we're in the jumping state. And this variable right here, you might not have this. If you followed my previous tutorials, you probably will. And this means the same as being on the floor. So sometimes being on stairs doesn't detect as being on the floor. Um, that's why I have this variable in my code. You might not have this, but this is basically just saying if we're not on the floor in any way and we just change the crouch state, which means we're going to have to add that extra air time. So I'm going to set this translate y if possible variable to the variable we set earlier, crouch jump add if we are crouched. And if we're not crouched anymore, then we're going to uh, remove it and take it out of the take that extra jump height out and reverse what we just did and so yeah it's going to be positive if we're increasing the jump height giving them the extra air time or negative if not and then based on that translate y if possible variable um, we're not going to directly just move them that we first are going to do another body test move um, we're using the self test move function again here and this time um, we are getting this result variable, which allows us to get some more information back from the collision. Um, so yeah, basically we're just gonna, before we actually translate them Y, whatever that number is, we're just running a test of translating them Y, whatever that number is. And then um, this will return uh, a, number of things in this result variable, one of them being the travel distance, how far the body test motion was able to travel. If there's nothing obstructing us, then it will be the full translate Y if possible. But if the character like hits the ceiling on the way, or more likely if they are falling down, they hit the floor, when we uncrouch them, um, they're not gonna like stand up through the floor um, and we will only move them how much is appropriate to uh, not have them clip into anything using this. So if we are adding this extra air time or revoking it, removing it, um, we're gonna run a body test motion before we actually add or remove it. And then we only add the amount to the Y position that we can. This get travel will return the distance traveled before it hits something. So this will always be a safe distance to translate them to. It could be zero if they're like already uh, on the floor. And that is all you need and now your crouch jumping will work as well. 
And that's pretty much everything functionality wise. You can use this crouch jump to jump up objects. You get a little bit of extra air time. Allows you to jump up higher distances. Pretty common and familiar mechanic if you've ever played Counter-Strike Source or any Source games. And now this will be feeling pretty good, but we still have the camera smoothing to do. So when we crouch, it's still like pretty jittery. And luckily this will be a really quick add to do. And so this is just going to be a couple of quick adds and changes in our handle crouch function. So we are going to, instead of setting the head position dot Y directly here and snapping it down, we're going to use a move towards function and set the, this is a built-in function in Godot that moves the first value towards the second value by the third value. So the, we're going to start with the head position dot y, the current position, and then we want to move it towards the bottom of the crouch, the negative crouch translate position, if we are currently crouched. Otherwise, zero, which would be back to the original peak head position. And the speed I'm using here is seven multiplied by delta, and you can fiddle with this uh, and change it to whatever values you want. I found seven to feel the best and like the smoothest, most responsive for crouching. Um, but yeah, this, this is going to control the speed and you want to multiply it by delta so it's smooth with time. And then up here in the translate Y if possible, which remember this is related to crouch jump. So we're going to translate the player up to give them that extra air time. But this also moves the head. So to keep the head in the same position because we don't really when we do like a crouch jump we want the head to stay in the same spot really so we're gonna subtract the so like this would be just our legs you can visualize it as like just your legs are getting tucked or untucked here so the head should be staying in the same position really like the capsule is going to get longer but the head should be staying in the same place really um so we're going to subtract the get travel dot y just like we're adding it to the capsule to get that extra air time um and then we're going to clamp just in case uh this might not be necessary but just as a safety thing i think it's probably a good idea to clamp the head position dot y uh between zero and the minimum crouch height and with that we are all done and yeah now we got crouch smooth working that feels a lot better to me and we got pretty much all the features you would want for a crotch, I think. Um, and now it's really starting to feel like a source game. You got like all the features you would want. You got this extra um, air time on the jump where you tuck your legs in. And you can kind of get up higher ledges if you crouch jump. And you can crouch under things. You won't get stuck in things with it. And I think this is a pretty, pretty good uh, implementation of the crouch here. I found it to work pretty well. And yeah, it's really starting to feel like a source game. We got a lot of the good features in. If you followed my previous tutorials, we got B Hop, we got Surf, we got the source crouching. One thing I didn't talk about here is we don't have like a player model animation for the crouch. And yeah, I guess you could do something like this where you like uh, actually shrink the capsule mesh as well. But uh, assumedly, you would have like an actual player model at some point, so you you wouldn't be you wouldn't be doing this. Um, so once once we uh, do a video on having an actual player model, we'll actually animate the crouch. Um, until then, I mean, I guess I'll leave the code for doing this in the GitHub repo if anybody actually wants it, um, if you're following this series of tutorials. Uh, but yeah, I'm just setting the capsule side. It looks pretty funny. And that is the video. I hope you enjoyed. Um, I have more videos planned in this series. I'm going to continue building out this FPS character controller and trying to build tutorials of the individual parts in hopes they will be useful to some people. And as always, the full GitHub link of the character controller is available on GitHub. Free download, CC0, public domain license. Use it for whatever you want. No need to credit. And so, yeah, I hope this tutorial helps somebody. Um, if you enjoyed it, rate, comment, subscribe. And thanks for watching.